Housing shortfall cuts across major sub-Saharan uh, sub -Saharan African economies, but investors over the years have come up with winning recipes for this challenge. Well, some of the success stories were shared in a dialogue session on African property market, where challenges faced by investors was also explained. I will divide West Africa into two segments. Um, one is the Francophone, and then two is the Anglophone, which are completely different. For example, um, um, on interest rates and mortgages in the, uh, in the Francophone, it's more advanced. So access to housing is much easier. The mortgage market is more developed. I mean, there they're used to interest rates at single digit. Mm. Recently, actually, the World Bank has signed with UMOA, which is the West African Bank, you know, to provide 155 million, you know, to, um, for affordable housing, which is not the same with, with the English-speaking West African countries. Now, in terms of investors, I mean, it depends on who you're talking, um, are talking about. Um, I am focusing more on affordable housing. So I don't look at people who want to you know, make returns out of their investment. But I'm looking at this big demand which exists. I mean, today there was a lot of people who spoke about you know, affordable housing, mm -hmm. which exists across Africa. Everywhere you go, there's a huge demand for affordable housing. So I'm trying to tweet what it takes to make affordable housing a reality. And today, really, if you ask me, the market is in Nigeria. There's no doubt about it. The numbers are here, and that's why I'm here. Yeah, but tell us about the Gambia market. Well, the Gambia market, I mean, if you talk about the Gambia market, you cannot shift away from politics. I guess everybody in the room here, you know, is aware that we had a change of government in December. We just changed the whole, 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 the whole um, ball game. Um, um, for the past, let's say, 15 years or more, People, of course, have just abandoned our country. Today, within a flick of a second, we are working on a $500 million investment back into the country. Wow. So politics, we cannot, again, I'm sure it's not a platform for us to discuss politics, but it influences a lot of things that we do in the private sector. So in the Gambia today, we're about to launch an estate with 10,000 homes. We're developing, we're the master developer um, of the free trade zone at the airport, 168 hectares. We're involved in the planning of about two five-star hotels. So everything is coming up, and the government needs it. So, um, yes, Gambia is opening up. I'm sure you saw my marketing. I will not pay for this. Yeah. Where we're targeting Nigerians, selling them Gambian homes to pay in Naira, and we give them their returns in, in dollars. Wow. So a lot of things happening. There's a lot of hope. But it's a new government. They just came in about, what, eight, nine months ago. But there's a, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities in there. Rent and, and prices are dollars, so we, we've been less hit by the currency fluctuations. Um, obviously, the average person who earns local city is not able to buy the same amount uh, or afford the same, same way. But um, we are fortunate that our economy is dollarized. So our rental yields are 12% in dollars. Um, that was in the good times. Now you're getting about 9% on the U.S. dollar for, for an apartment in town. So we've been fortunate in that sense. Um, I came, you know, when I arrived, I was earning pounds. I actually was working for a multinational company, and I was earning pounds, but I still couldn't afford to live in, um, in a decent part of town, like, a, let's say, a Lekki equivalent in, in Accra. So I came up with a product which was slightly smaller. Um, it was a 150-square-meter, two-bedroom townhouse, and I sold it at $1,000 a square meter, so $150,000. But that was, in terms of absolute price point, that was a lot cheaper than the executive homes in East Legon, which were going for 400000 So I created a market and a niche there. Um, and so, you know, I'm not targeting the affordable side, but I've identified a niche where from $100,000 to $200,000 price point, uh, I find that there's decent demand there, um, and I can still use the same off-plan um, model. So I'm, I'm very happy with, with, with the, 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 the niche I've chosen, and we're just trying to grow and, and you know, um, get better each time. Like I said, the Ghanaian market, we are competing with Americans and Turkish, so you really do have to, you know, it's, 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 a, global, it's a global market now, so a lot of the developers have learned to really fast track their, their development. It's a great space, it's difficult, but um, I'm, I'm honored and, and proud to, 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 to be in the space.
In the last year and a bit, we've, um, we've really been challenged. But in the last uh, three months, we've seen an improvement. Things are starting to, to turn. And we're pretty positive that um, by the middle of next year, or the latter quarter of 2018, we'll see a significant improvement in the retail leasing and on the shopping centre front. However, it still remains challenging. Our main, main concerns from our retailers has been able to pay their rent, which is significantly increased by up to 40 to 60 percent due to the exchange rate challenge, which we experienced um, post the 20th of June last year, which you'll all I'm sure be aware of. So that's my experience currently in Nigeria. But we all uh, the ongoing optimist and that things are going to improve significantly. That's why I'm still here. It's good to stay positive. Well, Algerian farmers are struggling to export the same fig, which has been a major source of income for the Bani Mashif community. Even though the dried figs received the geographic indication label last year, giving them recognition and protection in local and international markets, the farmers are yet to receive any help from the authorities. For Beba families in the northern Algerian town of Benimosh, fig and olive trees have been a source of income for generations. The two products make up 80% of the land area of Benimosh. About 30 varieties of fig have been identified important economic potential and exceptional nutrition and taste qualities. But this diversity is disappearing from pressure of one commercial product, the dried fig. The area got a shot in the arm last year when its famed dried figs got the geographic indication label, which certifies that a product has a certain quality due to its geographic origin. I produce up to 10 quintals per year. I took this job after my father and grandfather. It is a family job, and I work hard, but I don't have the necessary tools. I want to export the figs as it used to be exported in the 40s, but I don't have the financial resources. Some of the farmers declined to speak on camera, but Omar Bakush said he would like more government support to be able to export to Europe and the Gulf region. If I had the right resources, I would have been able to export this type of fig to Europe and the Gulf countries. We have huge demand. Everybody loves these figs, and it is excellent, and I am so proud of our production. Farmers in the town say they are yet to receive the government support they were promised to help them export more. They are hoping that the authorities match words with action so they don't lose the only source of income they've known for years. And finally, Nigeria's Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachiku, has hinted that the country will finally join its OPEC counterparts in capping its daily crude oil production output in 2018. It told journalists at an oil conference in Cape Town, South Africa, that the current oil prices are encouraging, but OPEC will not rule out further output cuts to shore up the market. Nigeria is targeting on oil production of 1.8 million barrels per day by early next year in compliance with OPEC's target limits, while the country currently produces between 1.6 to 1.7 million barrels per day. OPEC, Russia and other non-member producers have cut oil output by about 1.8 million barrels per day since the deal began in January 2017. And that's our program today. Thank you for watching. I am BC Adebayo.